And so it was a way for me to separate it mentally from like my own self-worth. Did you come up with a separate name for this persona too? No, I created a persona called Corver Bro at some point. Uh, and that was everything I wanted to be and wanted to try. That way, if I failed, it was Corver Bro's fault and not Ross's fault. What is Corver Bro do? I haven't heard of it. He's just, this, he's, he's a marketer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest, I still don't fully believe you, but hey, we'll take your word for it. That's some royalty free shit, people. That's what we do. Well, we're back. I'm Puyan from Scratchpad. We've got Corp. From Corp. Excited to have Donald with us. Excited to be here. Do, do people call you DK? Because I'm going to do that. You know, only like friends call me DK. So the fact that so you... So no, I shouldn't you, do you, that. You know, you, <laughs> you, know you, you can come into that <laughs> circle now. So, you know, some yeah. people call it DK. I'm just going to sneak in right behind Ross on that. Too. <laughs> but first, I've got a question for you as a sales trainer. Why is it that in sales training, repetition is required more than any other training? Oh, dude, 100%. How much time do I have? Let's go with this. <laughs> I mean, even, even of the basics, right? Like of the basics on ask a question. Get curious. Yeah. So I, I, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer. Our foundational principles that we teach are all built on like uh, just master and fundamental concepts of sales. Most training that I've been through and a lot of them that you probably sit, sat through is like, you know, you come in and they do like, a, you know, a couple of days or do like a week long thing and like it's beautiful. But the studies show that retention of that is like 17 percent. So it's kind of stupid money that you're, you know, you put money into this and it's going right out the door. What we discovered and it's just from my stupid experience, like mistakes that I've made and learned was um, and we stumbled on this. I, again, I'm not saying I'm a genius, but I was building a course and teachable when I first started creating one of our course, they said, if you don't have content for your course yet, don't worry about it. Don't build it all. Just build week by week. And I was like, shoot, let me do that. So I started building out my course and our program just like each week because I was doing a lot of coaching. And then I was like, you know, this one on one, I need to do one to many. So we started doing a training program and I told folks like, hey, sign up for the program. We're going to have the first stuff this week and then next week and then so forth. But what we saw was that people were actually getting stuff done each week. And then after the course got done, we started going back and we said, um, because the way our training is designed is like you come in, you watch the the modules, and then at the end of the week or sometime during the week, we have a group training session where we role play and practice the stuff. And now you're you know you're building on it. But again, this was all by accident because what started to happen though, people started to really love those group sessions. They really started to have the accountability. They were sending their emails. They were saying, "Check this out." You know, they're you know sharing the recordings of their calls. And we started to really dissect, and they started to really have better improvement. So we're like, "Holy crap! We just found found out something great." Let's build all of our programs like this. And what we saw was a repetition was important because it was now instead of like this over the course of two days, we're going to teach you how to do cold outreach and use LinkedIn Navigator as well. It's like now this week, let's focus on this part of LinkedIn. Let's focus on this part of Navigator. Now let's focus on the you know writing up the email and then let's focus on using a phone. So then over the course of like five, six weeks, they build the habits. They're practicing the stuff. They have accountability in the group because nobody wants to show up the next week and sound like an idiot because they didn't do the stuff where the email looked like garbage. So that repetition was critical. And the important part is like, there's so much in sales that you just can't like, it's any other sports or any other like talents that you have, you got to keep doing it over and over and over and over and over again. And I've seen, and you all have seen it too, where you have folks who are better in sellers who've been selling for a while. It's like they have one year of sales experience over 30 years. And because they didn't do anything else to add on to it, they didn't build that reputation. And they almost like became lethargic with their muscles, quote unquote, sales muscles, because they don't, they're not practicing their questions. They're asking dumb questions and they're not being more, they're not being proactive in their, in their, um, in their efforts. So I went on there for a minute. So is there, is there the equivalent of a batting cage for asking questions? Oh, bro, there is. Um, I think the biggest, <laughs> the biggest, where is it and how can I get access to it? <laughs> I feel one of the best things you can do is just get into some groups. Like there's different groups that you can take advantage of on LinkedIn or even on Facebook and just go there. But the, the easiest thing that I did, I just found somebody else in my company and I just asked them. And that was really helpful for me. So anyone, and, and I think the, the problem that we find is like, if you, if we give salespeople this uh, opportunity to say, well, you, you know, you have to go and find this, you know, a group per se as that option, 
it's going to delay their, uh, I guess, their opportunity is going to make excuses. But if you just say, you know, just find somebody in your company and toss a couple emails at them and, you know, toss a couple questions at them and ask them what they think about this, that idea of doing that alone will help to increase their performance because you're going to have that accountability. You have somebody else on the outside. Join our Facebook group, for goodness sakes, um, the sales evangelizers or LinkedIn group, and you can do the same idea. Um, and we're also building an app on building on a community where we have people doing that stuff, but you don't necessarily need to do that. You could just find a couple of people in your company and, and just do that with them. Are there dumb questions? Bro. I have a theory. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think there's a, I think if the answer you, is yes. If <laughs> I was going to try to get yes. political here for you. <laughs> I have many questions about sales training, but I feel like maybe we should work chronologically and start with the mangoes. So it's all start once upon a time in a month. May, may, may I read upon the, the mango feel at Jamaica? <laughs> <laughs> and then my daddy said, you have to go sell some mango in a month if you want to eat dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so it started with this um, in Jamaica. You ever been outside the country to like South America or any of those other countries? You know, they have like little tiendas and, you know. I've actually little, been to Jamaica. Everyone has like these little convenient, not everyone, every community has like a little um like a convenience store, but it's really a shop. Somebody on somebody's house, and they sell like the staple products, like rice and like um, you know beans and whatever meat, simple things. And there was a group across the street from our house, and they were bigger. And their shop, they had like actual toys and stuff. So don't tell my family this, but I'd go over there and go look at their toys and play with their stuff. So they're competitors, and they had this like ninja on this bike. And I was like, dang, that is cool. I want that. And I needed money. So a little bit before this, my cousins had told me to climb the mango tree because I'm the skinniest and the youngest kid. And it was a skinny, smaller tree to go get mangoes. So I've got these mangoes. And I'm like, if people want the mangoes, like, like my family, maybe I could sell mangoes. So I climbed the tree and I picked some mangoes. And I put these mangoes on like this, this flower stand that my, my aunt had and put it out, you know, right there next to the front gate. And I was like, bro, I'm going to sell some mangoes and I'm going to make some money and I'm going to buy this ninja bike and it's going to be the best thing. And absolutely no one bought anything from me. So I, I, I went bigger and I said, all right, I'm going to get cookies as well. So I had cookies. I put them in baggies, cookies and mangoes. Who's going to refuse that? Um, Bro, I ate more cookies than anyone bought. So I think I sold like probably like two bags. And it was people who had pities on, pity on me. Um, the point is, I started doing that. And I realized that there was a lot of things that I wasn't doing correctly. Long story short, I never got the ninja bike. So if you want to buy me a ninja on a bike, um, that'd be cool. I would <laughs> yeah. love that now. Um, my nine, I'll seven, add that to my Google cookies. Search. Thank you. Thanks for getting those ads. <laughs> You're going to get it through Sendoko. And it's going to be like... <laughs> <laughs> Ninja bike with Ninja. <laughs> um, so, but so it, the, the the idea though, I learned a lot from it because there are certain people. People are selling in Jamaica mangoes, and all the mangoes that they were selling weren't different from the mangoes coming from my yard. I mean, all the trees are like pretty much all from the island. The fruits are coming all from the same island. What made one person more successful than the other? Um, but it did teach me a lot. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes I made um, is that I was inside the gate when I was selling my products. I didn't open the gate. It, kind of novel idea, right? I thought people could see me. It was like those metal gates. And I didn't go out and talk to anyone. I just sat back and waited. And as you saw what people were doing, like in a market that were actually killing it, professionals at selling street cart vendors, they were doing all those things that I weren't doing. And when I looked at it, when I further later on in my life, I came to the US and I wised up and uh, I started selling candy. I went to Alberson and was, I was that kid with a backpack full of like candy and then one textbook. Um, and uh, I was making good money doing that. Um, and then I went to high school and I started creating my own little business and selling things. So the mango started to evolve, right? And then I went into college. My buddies were like, bro, you should consider doing like sales. So I started doing Dish Network and did decent with that. Then I went to Timeshare and started selling people to get the Timeshare presentations. And eventually door-to-door -door security and did some IT training classes. And when I got into the B2B world, it was really like that's when I saw like the Holy Grail because you're selling these bigger items and larger prices. And it was like, this is cool. And then, um, you, you know, Nelly, right? Nelly has a song. Um, in that Nelly song, it says, I'm like Folgers, I'm young, black, and rich. So my buddies in high in college, they're like, bro, you're making all this money. Like in college, you're Folgers. So my nickname in college was Folgers, young, black, and rich. <laughs> but it seems like you learned an important lesson yeah, I think a lot of first time founders after having raised millions and now tens of millions learn, which is if you build it, they may not come. No. If you get the mangoes, 
and you put them on a box, they may still not come to buy them. No, the, there's a, there's so much more to it than that. Um, and I, I think it's there. It, it, one of the principles I talk about in one of the book in my book, a recent book is like that. It's not about the product. It's actually, you know, like you, some people talk about the race car versus the driver. And I think so much of it has to do with the driver in, in the sense, like, you know, the sales reps versus the product. Anyone could probably sell the the software or the products that we have, but can somebody really thrive? What makes the top performers? And that fascinates me. And we've studied some of those folks and we've had them on a podcast and we saw what they have done and what they consistently do. And it aligns with like the principles, like, you know, of really good mango sellers, right? They're creative. They have a process. They stick to that process. They master fundamentals. Um, they, uh, you know, they, they've honed their pitch. They practice um, and they've, they've become, rep rep they've become, a, it become a part of them. And when we went back to Jamaica in 2017, we got this same, we saw this lady, she was selling like trinkets at one of the tourist shop. And bro, it was like everything that she did was in line with like what a B2B seller would do. Obviously this is a shorter process, but it was, it, it helped me to realize that I could learn so much from these street cart vendors that I could apply to my sales efforts. Um, and yeah, it, uh, it, it, it all comes back down to, um, you know, not just the product, it's the individual, um, yeah, I think that's very real, the performative aspect of sales. That's what it always was for me. I think a lot of people, they they feel like it has to be themselves. I think a lot of introverts who thrive in sales, like they have their selling voice. They have their 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 specific way that they're not the same at home necessarily. You know, yeah. and they go and they go execute that thing. And I think it, it for me, it personally just helped separate failures that I had where I was like, oh, the performance didn't hit as well here. Let me adjust the performance. This isn't like a Ross issue. This is like Ross's performance issue. Yeah. Um, and so it was a way for me to separate it mentally from like my own self-worth. Did you come up with a separate name for this persona too? <laughs> You're like, this was Roger's failure, not Ross. <laughs> I, I know some people who did do that. No, I created a persona called Corver Bro at some point. Uh, and that was everything I wanted to be and wanted to try. That way, if I failed, it was Corver Bro's fault and not Ross's fault. What is Corver Bro do? I haven't heard of it. He's just, a, he's, he's a marketer. <laughs> <laughs> he's a B2B marketer, you know, I hear he's really good looking, but otherwise, <laughs> otherwise mostly a marketer. If you have to come up with a different persona, a different name, whatever it is. But I think that aspect of having to go into performative mode is so, is so real and it's so key. And honestly, I think it helps with all of the rejection that you face. So that you don't take it personally, because there's a lot of that that comes that way as well. Yeah, we did. Uh, the first training program I went through was Sandler, and they had a, a concept. Yeah, and, you know, you know that that principle, like they they taught, and I was like, bro, this is so genius. Um, so it, it made it feel like you know a water running off a duck's back. At this point, I was like, they're not they're not mad at Donald, man. They don't know me. And I'm like, they don't know a Donald Kelly. They, if they know me, they wouldn't do that to no one. Sure. Which Donald, Donald Kelly is here right now? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> it's like, it's DK or is it Donald? <laughs> there you go. That's the difference, Ross. So when did you get into launching your own training program and content? Yeah, um, accident. Um, so after college, like during college, you know, selling and so forth and did pretty well. Um, one of the companies I did, I, you know, I was one of their top performers um, and it wasn't like anything crazy. I was a college student, um, um, but I, it's my friend's family's company and I just started, I just worked with them when I got into the, the B2B side, um, selling IT training classes like MCSC, Net Plus, uh, A Plus. And uh, I would come home from breaks and I would work here and then I would do stuff remotely from there too. Um, and um, it, it just, I just did, did well with it. So when I graduated, I worked and I sold, this was back when they first started doing EHR, electronic health records. So I got into the medical space and started doing like trying to sell those, um, trying to sell those. It was interesting, um, but it was good. And then I got into managed IT services and then eventually got into the SaaS um, software and I was doing pretty decent of it. And then the podcast started and just started sharing stuff with it. Um, and then I remember when the first person that reached out to me, it was, it was um, Jose Diaz. And he asked me if I could coach him. I'm like, bro, like, the only people I coach are people on my flag football team. Um, and I was like, $300, uh, uh, $300 a month. I'll meet with you four times a month. And uh, he was like, this idiot. He's like, yeah, that's great. Let's He's do like, it. Yeah, done. <laughs> okay. So I started helping him and they, he, they started seeing results. So they were happy with that. And then Destiny was the next one. She actually, she searched podcasts, found me. She was on in Fort Lauderdale. 
Um, she was working with Caesar's Palace um, and started coaching her. She did well as well. And then I, um, all my first you know, people I'm talking about them, Katie Henderson, um, she was up in Alabama, found a podcast, reached out. She was doing um, IT uh, sales and she said, you, you have some tech stuff. Can you give me some tips and ideas? And I coached her for a little bit and she did well. So it was like, you know, there's something here. Um, so it just kept going. The podcast kept going and then did the coaching stuff. And then uh, it wasn't until probably like in 2015, my wife and I, we were talking because my goal was to either go back for like an MBA. We we're looking at like Wharton. I visited Northwestern and like some of these uh, Ivy League schools. Like, you know, can we really try to, you know, go for that or to do a startup? And TSE just started making money. And then we got sponsors. Prezi was the first sponsor that came through that said, yeah, we want to sponsor the podcast. And I was talking to my wife and I'm like, she was like, okay, let's, let's see if you can bring on X amount of dollars every single week, every single month consistently. Let's, that'll mean it's viable. Let's continue down that path. I was like, okay, let's do that. So we did that and we started making money with it. So I was like, all right. And in sales, you're doing pretty well. So we paid off debt. We paid off cars. We, we had got married, paid off the wedding, all that stuff. So I was like, this is cool. So now I got a question yeah, man. about one of the, I would say the harshest audience on earth might be a group of salespeople who don't want training. Bro. And you, and you walk into that Bro. shit and they're just like, Boo, this fucking sucks. Like, Can I pull up the how email? Do you do that? Can I do the email right now? Can I send you the recording of the last two weeks? <laughs> yeah, pull, I mean, how do you do it, man? Like that is a hostile environment of a bunch of whiny little soft millennials and Gen Zs who just don't want it. Don't want it. An all day training. And I was one of those people. I'm not going to yeah. lie. I was one of those and I think we've all done it, right? Because you, you, you realize you can do, you know, stuff and you can, you know, you can do it. Um, what the, the biggest thing that's worked for me and, um, and I'll tell you about one of the teams that we're doing right now, but just to answer that question real quick, the biggest thing that's worked for me is to just let them know that you're not, try not to be an outsider as much as possible. So what I try to do is try to connect with them as much as possible beforehand. You know, get me introduced to the team, get connected with them on LinkedIn, start having some conversations, start having chatting. And you're going to start seeing the pack start separating. You're going to have your lone wolves and you're going to have the people who are, I know what I'm doing. And then once you start doing stuff with them, like if I, you know, I, I prove, prove to them, like one of the teams we're working with right now, they're like saying, you know, talking all the crap and you know, how, what can you teach? Tell me. And I look like I, I'm 37, but I don't know. It's, it's Jamaican water, right? I look like I'm 14. Um, so sometimes they're like, you know, what can I, <laughs> what can you, you offer me? But when I jump on a call with them or I call into their own prospect and show them the recordings, I play that for them. They're like, oh, OK, uh, well, may maybe maybe, you know, something so that quickly can put them like, you know, I'm just not talking crap. It's stuff that I actually do myself right now and that I've done already. And then the other piece to that, too, is just kind of like, um, you know, just, you know, the credibility has helped tremendously now with some of the companies that we've partnered with and work with. So, you know, it's, they'll say, Hey, we're going to have this guy come in and do some training. Like, yeah, yeah, I know stuff. But then when I drop the pedigree of some of the stuff we've done, they're like, all right, well, maybe there's something here. And then when you can actually show them that you can do it, I think that gives you a lot of respect. It's kind of like in, not that I've been to prison, but you know, if you go into prison, you're going to have the, you know, your street cred, You got to beat right? someone's ass. <laughs> you got to beat someone's ass right out of the Come bat. On, bro. What? What? <laughs> you got to send a message as soon as you get in there. So you go in, you beat a sales rep's ass and you say, let me teach you how to sell. Yeah, man. He all right. He cool. He cool. <laughs> all right. All right. I'll listen. I'll listen. Well, I'll listen. What's the equivalent of that though? Like, are you, are you dragging, are you dragging the, like the worst performer across the stage or showing like, showing a call? That was just like, listen, this was a disaster by every single measure that exists. Yeah. No, one of the the best example, like we had a training with a group and I'll tell you two teams, one of the teams right now, um, they, uh, sim similar idea. One of the guys he's been selling for a while, he didn't feel that he needed anything. Um, so I told their, see their, uh, their executive team, like, bro, let's, let me, uh, I'm, I'm willing to show them that I can do this. So give me some of, I don't even sell your product. So give me some of your, your leads. I do calls. I, I actually prospect myself for my business. I'll call into some of your accounts. And I was able to do that um, with them. And it definitely did help to kind of show credibility um, with them. And then the other team, this one was really, they're still challenging. So they, but the, here's the issue with them. They're trying to turn some people that were like, almost like sales ops into sales reps. And, you know, they're in sales ops for a reason. No. Bro, they can't yeah. get saved. You can't save that. 
they 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 ain't, they ain't going trying to be a hero. They ain't going to heaven. They, 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 yeah. They're not. Yeah, no, they're not. They're not. <laughs> they're not going to sales heaven. Um, so that was kind of like one of the the issues with them. So we just revamped the program. So I was like, you know, we can't complete this program because they're that is definitely a hostile environment. I almost went home crying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now I was going to ask you if you've ever walked into a situation where you're like, this is this is not salvageable. No, yeah, definitely weren't. So we did a change with it because they they weren't. The the, the, t- the company is just trying to mold these people into some of those entry level folks. And it's like, you know, you have your folks that are closing, but they these ones here, that, that dog is never going to bite. So how can we change that? So we just we did a survey with them. What are some things you can do to improve um, the overall sales experience with the organization? And we just crafted a different program for the. This um, one's called Introduction to Pips. Yeah. And here's exactly. how that works. <laughs> and here's how we get them out the door. That's how this works. <laughs> how long How long do you give somebody to improve? Yeah. I mean, well, well, like, what, what have you seen? Like, at what point is it just that's yeah. not happening? If you go like anywhere from those, you, typically companies would do a 60 to 90 day plan. If you, somebody's not, because you, every everyone's KPI is going to be different, right? But if you, let's say, for instance, um, if it's a BDR, like, if your team is setting five appointments and you're selling setting one appointment a week, like there's something wrong there. And if you're and and I'm not necessarily looking at the outcomes at that point. I'm looking at the activities that lead towards that outcome. So the 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 leading indicators. Like let's listen to some of the calls. Like are you doing? Are you actually following route? Are you you know running the right routes? Um, are you asking effective questions? Are you listening? Are you at least having meaningful conversations? Let's measure some of those things. And if they're measuring that, then you can obviously, we know the results are going to come. Do the form and then the you know the overall performance is going to be great. Um, but I would say if somebody can't, not hitting the, the, the leading indicators on the first, you know, first month, then they're probably not going to really make any changes. Um, but companies give them those 60, you know, 30 to 90 days. If you're not doing anything after 90 days, that's way too long. I was going to say on, uh, on that note, DK is awesome having you. Um, Rock, how, how are we ended this again? We need a pump up song. That's what I, I yes. saw there. Oh yes. Yes. Pump up song. So you are going, you got the biggest mango on earth, but you've got the CEO of who wants, who's not sure he's into mangoes, but you got the best one. What are you listening to to get you absolutely juiced? Cause so you know, you're going to close. You've heard a box, right? Um, like the song called the song called the box. The box, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're right, right. Right. Yeah. So I got that um, that I listened to, and I go ham on that one. Um, I actually broke my uh, what you call it in my uh, my dash. You know that like your your glove compartment thingy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The seats. You ripped that I was thing like off. driving, and I'm like, and I was like, closed it just. I just closed a deal, and I was like pumped, and I was like, we're hitting some good numbers, and I was like, yeah. And then I was like, oh, sorry, that was really loud. <laughs> And then I was like, oh, crap. So it's like broken. So I have to take it back to the dealership to get it fixed. Okay. So on the opposite side of that, um, the call went horrible. The meeting mm-hmm. went horrible. He took your mango, threw it out the window. It is squashed at the bottom. And you got to recover. What's the recovery song? Uh, the recovery song is probably going to be something from Chronix. Um, yeah. it's, it's the box again. <laughs> <laughs> we fired it back up. <laughs> We're going next door. Uh, the Chronics reggae cigarette. Uh, you know, the, Chronics has some good uh, chill music. Um, but I'll just probably put on, um, you know, and I'll just probably go to YouTube and put Chronics and just kind of go mellow out and chill and just kind of reflect on life. Chronics radio. Well, I guess one one last question we do ask is like, plug plug everything right now. We got the book coming out. Where can people find you? What should they Google? What are we doing? For the book, I'm not going to send you to Amazon yet because I want to get your email address. So go to the salesevangelist.com slash mango, and then you'll get a first chapter for uh, no cost. That's like zero, zero dollars. Um, and then what will happen there, uh, we'll definitely uh, invite you to go to Amazon and get that because uh, that'd be awesome. Um, so that's one. Two, we started, we're doing an event in South Florida, um, a one day event. Most times when I go to conferences, I'm going to Atlanta, I'm going to New York, going to Texas or, you know, Vegas, um, Chicago. And I was like, screw it. I live in paradise. Um, I'm going to do something. So we're doing a one day event um, here in South Florida, June 24th. So if you're listening to this, that page will be live at this point. So you can go to salesevangelist.com slash biz dev. Um, so it's biz dev 2022. It's all around business development. Um, and it's one day event. Uh, so we'd love to have you come out to that. And then the final thing that I'm pushing is, um, you know, 
I think that's probably just download our podcast. So go check it out. Go to salesevangelist.com um, slash podcast. Well, I'm excited to read the book. Sure. Um, and thanks again for, for joining us, man. This was awesome. No, it was an honor. I appreciate it. And uh, I'm, I'm sure you guys don't need this, but I'm just telling the folks who are listening, you guys, as a podcaster, it's kind of like, you know, when you ask for it, it's kind of like, ugh, you know, here comes Ross, here comes Poyon asking for it. But from somebody on the outside, the show is like legit. So I'd ask you guys, just go share it with somebody and leave a review for them because it goes a tremendous long way. That up. would be so tight. This is really good tight. stuff and it's good. So thanks. Thank you guys for all you guys.